Well, I know, right? I mean, come on now. All right, we're going to do it. Uh, we're glad you're all here with us to do it, and uh, we're going to go ahead and do it. So uh, here we go as I count it down. Uh, the it in question is uh, in three, two, one. The pizza box is recyclable. The crust is compostable. Ew. And the cheese. Don't get me started on the cheese. Well, let's fire up those stompers and make some dirty. <laughs> The Morning Stream. I live, I love, I slay, and I, I am content. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to TMS. It is the Morning Stream for the 2nd of April, 2024. I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Nibbitt. <laughs> Hello, Hello, and welcome to uh, Tuesday. That's right. I'm glad it's not the first anymore. F that day. That sucked. Yeah. I didn't see anything good. Nothing. Not, nothing funny. Nothing made me laugh. Nothing was creative. April Fool's Day was stupid this year. <laughs> stupid. And I think you even tweeted, get ready to hear old people complain about it for 24 hours. Yep. So. <laughs> and here we are. I'm not even full 24 hours later, and I'm still complaining about it. <laughs> I hate it. It was dumb. It was all, so yeah. all the attempts that was, I saw were s- sad. They were all sad. Yeah, dude. there was nothing. There was nothing that made me say, okay, now that one's pretty darn clever. Nothing. Yeah, nothing. There's usually one, guess, like one screen thing. Crush, screen Crush posted a video about how um, uh, Madam Web saved uh, Marvel you know, MCU. Oh and wow! That, the the headline made me laugh, but I saw it this morning, and so I was like, oh, well, I'm not going to watch that because I know it's a joke. Why would I bother? Well, Marvel related, I saw one that said um, Deadpool three was getting delayed till November because Disney wanted to cut down on some of the adult content in it, and mm-hmm. it, that was a fake story. Yeah. But it was presented in a way that just looked like I stuff I see every day on social media. Yeah, so I, yeah. I was like, oh, well, now. Pe-, and, and sure enough, most of the comments are completely oblivious to the day that it is. And they're just like, I can't believe Marvel's going to try to sanitize the eh, woke culture. Bitch. I'm like, <laughs> you guys, are you as thin as paper? What are, What is everybody doing? So that day, freaking F that day. It's a stupid day. Yeah. Uh, but I'm glad yeah. to be here doing this show on a Tuesday that is not the first. This is good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the story about Christopher Cross? What happened? Chris Cross passed oh, away? No, no. Chris Cross, uh, not Christopher Cross, but Chris Cross of the band Ultravox. I think he was also a member of, um, oh God, what was the band before Ultravox that um, Midyear was part of? It was uh, Their hit was Fade to Gray, and their name was, I think it began with a V. Mm. Not the Voidoids. Anyway, um, yeah, Chris Cross, the musician. Not, not, and not the Chris Cross that p- couldn't put their pants on the right way and sang about jumping. Yeah, and not Christopher Visage, Cross who's sailing you, away. Yeah, no sailing yeah, away TRP. Christopher Cross either, for the record. Yeah, TRPW was Chris Cross in Visage as well. That's, I think that might be also who, I, who I'm thinking of. So he died on the 25th. Um, that's a bummer. That's not great. Yeah. Wasn't that old? Uh, let's see here. Yeah. He was only, yeah. well, I guess 71's up there, but still. That's up there. Yeah. Still, you know. Uh, well, anyway, we got stuff. Yeah. We got to get yeah. going on this. I uh, So I took the dog for a walk yesterday and I had a thing happen. I told everybody about it on the Monday show last night, but I'm going to reiterate it here because this is perfect for okay. the TMS audience. And sure. And they'll sure. commiserate because I've had a lot of weird, weird dog walk moments. And, uh, <laughs> you yeah, know, as the weather starts to warm up, there'll probably be more, but... I'm out walking the dog, and there's this section of my walk I take pretty often where the sidewalk I'm going on runs parallel to a huge soccer park thing that's connected to a school, an elementary school. Okay. Nobody's over there. There's a couple of dogs and their owners chasing balls and stuff, but it's mostly just me alone. And I'm driving, or I'm walking, rather, on this thing with the dog, uh, wearing a big bright, that big red uh, Utah uh, University of oh. Utah thing I wore yesterday, the hoodie. Yes. Yeah. Wearing that, so super bright, everybody can see me. There's no way you're not going to see me. And I'm walking around with the dog, and the dog poops outside of what... Uh, so across the street, she poops across the street where I am, normal place and everything, but across mm-hmm. the street directly is a house facing the park, and at the house is a lady standing on the porch with her hands on her hips. Okay. Uh, which, you know, is enough body language for me to go, what What the frick are you doing? Yeah. But anyway, yeah. she's playing... Uh, who, who did... Um, 
Oh, Ricky Martin music. That's what was playing. <laughs> okay, really? I Living couldn't remember. Loca, basically, yeah. it was it, uh... something, not that song, but yeah. something with, I could tell it was him, and it was just some kind of real poppy, yeah. uh, you salsa, know, Central America influ- salsa. Latin influenced yeah. uh, pop song, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was blaring. I don't know what she was playing the song, but it was blaring out. And she's standing yeah. there with her hands on her hips and her legs kind of wide and dog poops. And I'm like, all right, get out the bag. Because I'm a responsible dog walker. I pick up yeah, my dog's poo. All right, everybody? Always. You should, too. Yes. I see these little poos left. I know someone's not picking them up, but it ain't me. Yeah. So I reach down, and maybe she's just had enough of this with people who don't pick it up. But I picked it up and got in the bag, and I wrapped it around. and made a little knot, airtight yeah. little knot. And I'm getting yeah. ready to walk away, and she says, I can see you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I went... Uh, and yeah. I, I didn't know what to say in my head. I want to yeah. go. Oh, can you like here? Can you see this bag of poo I'm throwing at you? At I was gonna high say, velocity? I can see you too. Yeah, I can see you too. <laughs> I wonder You're... if she did. She not did she look away while you were you know putting the poop in the bag? It's really funny. I like, don't know. I should have held up the bag and like shook it. You know, like this. What does yeah, that remind yeah, me of? That's exactly. like from a movie. What's that from? Where he goes and like this. What is that? Um, yeah, well, I'm thinking of. Uh, uh, the, the sausage in Game of Thrones. That's it. And, uh, That's it. That's totally is it. Is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ramsey Bolton does that thing with the dog. Right. With uh, Greyjoy's. Uh, so, yeah. 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 Greyjoy's uh, adopted idiot boy. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we uh, uh, we did that and I walked yeah. away and I didn't say anything. But then it bugged me the whole rest of the walk, of course, because I'm trying to understand what people are doing. I, I regret not just turning around going. Something like you just said, like, oh, I can see you too. or Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. Something you know. like that. I should have said <laughs> Did you something. See me? Did you see me pick the poop up and put it in the bag? <laughs> Would you like Living it? Living the Vida Loca. <laughs> <laughs> Bailamos. And then she's kind of rocking on her feet, I also noticed. So hands on her hips, doing this. Really? Just looking okay. like she wants a fight, you know? Yeah. I wasn't going to give her a fight, but uh, she wanted one. Golly, yeah. It's like that. First thing that came to my mind is I could see you too, and mm-hmm. I would have said that. I don't know if it would have been the right thing, but you know, it's it's one of those where I think of a hundred things that would have been funnier to say after. Yeah, yeah, anything other than yeah. me just walking. I blew that. That yeah. was my fault. Yeah, you uh, should pull down your pants and said, "Oh, really? Watch this!" and pull down your own pants and start pooping. Exactly. Now, if I was drunk, maybe I'd have done something else, like this listener who called us drunk. Would you like to hear a drunk call? Oh, love our drunk calls. Drunk dials. Yep. It's right. not a problem if you do it, but here no, here it no, is. No. If I can find it, where'd it go? Oh, it's down here. Here we go. Whoa, dude, you said it was okay if I called in stoned or drunk. I'm drunk, and I just listened to TMS. I'm playing video games. Bye. That's it. That's all we get. <laughs> totally fine. Listen, you are at home playing video games, drunk, nothing at all wrong with that, as long as you're not calling us, I'm by the wheel right now, I just mm-hmm. had a little bit too much to drink, thought I'd call TMS. I wouldn't mind knowing what he was playing, that'd be fun to know. You know. I wouldn't mind knowing what he was drinking. Yeah, what are you drinking, and then what do you pair with that, what game do you pair with your drink? Right, exactly, yes. How do you, and do you do well, do you just <laughs> button mash, or is it a nightmare, do you start over, what kind of game is it, I really would like That's to right. know. So next yeah. time you call yeah. in drunk, just a little more data, a little more info. That's all we're asking for. Yeah, give us more data. Yeah, what you're drinking, what you're playing. That's right. Do you feel like the two go together? Are you playing? Uh, <laughs> you're drinking Red Bulls and vodka and playing uh, like uh, Animal Crossing because I don't <laughs> think those two go together. I think, no, uh, no, don't do that. That seems like a really bad, bad idea. <laughs> a little wine and Call of Duty? No, not quite. No. Mm, a nice Merlot goes with uh, Call of Duty Warzone 2.0. Is that how we do it? <laughs> That's right. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, you can call in sober and say dumb stuff as well, CRNX. That's not a problem. Sober, you drunk, we don't care. Like this one, we got another call where they're just they're just mad, and they wanted to let us know. Not about us. Not us they're mad at. They're mad at technology, right. and so let's let her have her say. Why won't my phone let me email you? Love the show, though. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I'm not your tech support. It it's the tech support person in me. I did tech support for so many years for that, that damn software company, the newspaper software company. So my first thing is, oh, really? Tell me, are you getting an error message? What's happening? Is it bouncing back? Maybe you have the wrong email address. And yeah. Like, that's the first thing. Oh, I love was, it. Uh, I lo- oh, is it someone in our uh, chat? La Lichi Peach. Oh, yes. no way. That was you? 
Well, now you were you been... getting a bounce back message or were you getting an error? Were you? Oh, he figured it out. Okay, good. Okay. All right, cool. I'd See, be very good. curious what uh, what Turn happened. Turn it off there. and on again. <laughs> <laughs> Reboot it. Sometimes rebooting it doesn't. It. It's fine. But I'm going to keep this forever. Why won't my phone let me email you? I'm keep that forever. <laughs> like when we do like an email section, I should play that every time. Yeah, actually, that's perfect for uh, let's listen. Let's start with some some uh, emails, caller emails. Yeah. Right? So Lalicha Peach, well done. And also, I assume we got an email from you. Maybe I should try to find that real quick, just for funsies. See it. Yeah. Uh, what is it? It's signed by Lalicha Peach. Uh, Lalichi. Uh, I don't see it. Uh, I assume I'm looking for a, a girl name. Uh, uh, nope. Uh, I don't see it. All right. Well, right, right. whatever it is, I'm sure it's there, and I'm very excited to uh, explore <laughs> further. Uh, Brian, you went and saw the math, the mathematical question of the year, uh, the very successful already, uh, the King Kong times Godzilla. Uh, what yes. is the answer to the quiz question? Kong times Godzilla, the outrageous fortune. Perfect. Kingdom something. Dot I can't com. remember what the subtitle is yeah. uh all right so you've got uh you've got this world you've got this nice little balanced world yeah and on one side you've got uh, godzilla x kong or whatever i can't even remember what order it is in the movie and then the other side you've got uh godzilla minus one and and there's there's balance right one yeah. has to be really good and <laughs> the other one has to not be quite as good yeah um no seriously it's um it was uh, like as soon as the credits start rolling i looked over at uncle george and said you know that was just silly loud dumb fun it, a it, good time a good time at the theater things. which is all they promised and i think that's all i want out of it. exactly that's all i was looking for out of it and that's exactly what i got uh without giving any spoilers the movie begins with king kong running around loose in the uh the hollow earth area mm -hmm. if you've if you've seen the previous movies or sure. uh, monarch sure um monarch is so good if you're not watch monarch you should watch it but you don't need to have watched it for this thing to appreciate I'm, it. i am definitely going to watch that yeah um and uh and he bites down on a lizard and he goes oh and then they show his tooth, and he's got like a toothache. And so he he takes a portal back up to uh, uh, Earth, the outside of Earth, and they they sedate him and they uh, re extract and replace his tooth. This is is this true? Be, is this what you're saying? What you're saying is, is true. This is what the movie begins with. What the and uh, and if that doesn't kind of give you an idea of the kind of movie you're about to see. <laughs> So literally, it starts with King Kong's get, going in for a dental visit. Going in for a dental visit, exactly. Wow, I hope he has insurance. They, uh, I was, I, I, the other thing I said to George, I said, well, I guess they, they're deciding that they kind of want a Gar Guardians of the Galaxy. They want their Guardians of the Galaxy franchise because a, there's a lot more humor in this than there have been in previous uh, Godzilla verse movies. Um, a B, there's a lot of 70s music. Like, you know, the, the Bad Finger song is used prominently when uh, Kong and Godzilla are running around. It's the one that goes, I remember finding out about you. Oh, my gosh, dude. You know that one? Yeah. For the 70s? That's great. Uh, <laughs> it's just like, this is this is what it's come to, huh? Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, and I'd say somebody, somebody was, we were talking about how you know, there were no shared characters between Monarch and this movie. And I and I made the joke, well, Godzilla, I think, is probably a shared character. But And then they said something like, yeah, but he's barely in it. It's kind of, the, the movie definitely focuses more on Kong. It is a 70-30 Kong oh, really? Godzilla movie. That surprises yeah. me. I thought, I thought the whole idea was, because you had Skull People, Island, which was all Kong-y. Then you had uh, the first Godzilla one that we're trying to slip, slide in for film sack. Uh, the yeah. the Gareth Edwards one that one was very Godzilla obviously yeah yeah I thought it would be equal billing here in fact it even no, says Godzilla no. X Kong Godzilla X -Kong, got pro yeah. uh, top billing yeah no no it's uh it did you know apparently uh Godzilla is the remainder uh and and Kong is the divisor and uh. the, <laughs> the product of the three sides is less than the hypotenuse of the of the Mothra. <laughs> nice. Um, that, so we did get so so the math is complete. Really, and that's what the we math went is for. Complete. The um yeah, it's it's uh, you know, 
you go in with low go in with low expectations and it'll be a lot of fun and you know it's not as it's not as deep of a thinker as like uh late night with the devil which really wasn't as much of a thinker as just a, you know a much more serious movie if you mm. go in this is a popcorn film get a bowl of popcorn get your soda and uh and enjoy it you like the dan stevens is he good in there he's great yeah Dan Stevens is in there doing his best Bradley Cooper, basically. Mm. Like he's mm. got the Bradley Cooper hair, and he's not he's not broody like he was as Legion. He's he's the you know he's like uh, Australian accent. Uh, yeah, well, I'll need to. He's actually the one who completes the uh, the dental work. Yeah, well, we extracted the tooth and I put a new one in there. That's like uh, um. <laughs> made with the same polymer resin that uh, we used for the shielding on the blah blah blah. Yeah, that's not a filling. This is a filling, he says. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I'm looking at the, the Rotten Tomatoes thing. I was talking to somebody on Twitter yesterday, and yeah. they made a point that really resonated with me. Um, because whenever I see a big disparity between the audience and reviewers, I'm usually like, mm-hmm. well, why is that? And I kind of want to dig in. What's the, What are the score? What are the two scores? Uh, currently, uh, reviewers at 54 and uh, audience at 92. So this guy oh, says, "Wow, okay. I know it's a huge difference." And this guy says, "He says just because you can enjoy a bad movie doesn't change the fact that it's a bad movie." And I said, mm. "Well, are you do you mean that? In, like, what do you mean?" He goes, "No, I don't mean it in a negative way." His mm. point is, we need to start being okay, just liking shit for its very basic primal reasons. We don't have to have a big, you know, artistic right. take on it. And so whenever I see, I'm just going to see these differences differently in my head now. I'll see. 50% uh, yeah. reviewer, 90% audience and go, oh, well, this may not, you know, be from a technical or artistic standpoint, a great movie, but mm-hmm. clearly people are having a ball there. It. So, that's, you, you know, know, that's, that's probably, that's a really good way of looking at it because I'm sure, uh, if you're still on the site, pull up zone of interest and see what, uh, cause I would, I would say that that's a good movie. That's not enjoyable. Yeah. <laughs> Of interest. And I would say it's probably got a higher critic score and a lower audience score if it's got a disparity. Uh, seventy th- or ninety-three critical, seventy-eight audience, so a little yeah. lower, but still yeah. pretty so, high. So, so good movie, not as enjoyable as uh, Godzilla Kong. Yeah, dark, dark business in there, you know. Yes, exactly. Um, here, let me skip past that. I'm trying to see another example of like a new thing. <laughs> like how bad? Uh... I mean, it's in the trailer, but they 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 put a freaking uh, metallic boxing glove, a big old metal boxing glove on King Kong in this thing. I mean, how you know? Really? Who makes yes. it? People make it and then put it on there. Yes, uh, our our friend uh, uh, the Bradley Cooper you ordered on Wish puts it, lowers it on a uh, on Kong's wrist using a. <laughs> A giant uh, helicopter. Oh my lord! And uh, that's crazy. So it was, I, I it think... was intended for Mecha Kong or something like that. Well, we still have the glove. Oh, we could put that on King Kong. All right, let's do that because something happens. Does I'm Godzilla gonna... shoot? I won't bar... spoil away. Does Godzilla okay. shoot Barbies out of its mouth because all the pink that's got going all the pink. on? Pink. Uh, there's a whole reason he's pink. And uh... really, yeah. Am I gonna hate? Am I gonna hate why? I'm gonna hate why. <laughs> No, no, I don't think you'll hate why. It's just a funny, like, uh, oh, yeah, do you want me to say it? All right, folks, if you if you care about the spoilers. Uh, if you care about why he is pink, yes. pause All right, I'm us setting for a, a timer. I'm going to set a timer on my, hold on, I'm going to I'm gonna wrap this in 60 seconds. I love right? this. This is a great way to do stuff because people can, they have the skip ahead by 60 button on their players. Yep, exactly. That's exactly what I'm doing. All right, so and everyone at home, I'll I'll give you a hand up when we when we start and when we stop. Yeah, All right, Scott will do a hand job when it's time you can listen. Again. That's right. Okay, starting the starting the timer. Okay, R- ready? So go. Godzilla. Right. Godzilla uh, shoots pink because normally he shoots kind of a light blue, like a whitish light blue for his radiation. He absorbs it. Yep. It's for some reason that radiation is light blue. There's another kaiju in the ocean. Uh, can't remember which one it is but it's a a pink dragon and okay. has his own pink radiation that he floats around in and godzilla's like oh i need some of that and so he swims down to the body the bottom of the ocean where this other kaiju is tmf thank you uh, tv's travis and he swims down to the bottom of the ocean and then he and then he beats that uh that dragon thing and then he goes and he inhales all the pink radiation from that 
which then combines with the uh, the light blue radiation that he's got in. Uh. <laughs> we should all be 100% okay with this because that's how the old movies were shitty, stupid like that too. It's fine. Yes, exactly. Five, four, three, two, one. There you go. There's you can your come back, bit. everybody. Come back. Yeah. That was real dumb. Spoiler. Yeah. Tr- <laughs> trust, trust me, you saved yourself from hearing a very dumb thing that you will now go see. And You got to still go see the movie because it's... Yeah. it's, it's it's funny. But, I'm going to uh, go. Yeah. I think I'm going to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it just looks like you a can, good time. This is when you can absolutely see on your 4K TV. Uh, it's, uh, you know, turn the lights down, crank the sound way up, and just sit back and enjoy it. I think Dune Part 2 hits uh, digital buy, buy now status today. Um, oh, really? Cool. I think are you going to so. buy Are you going to own this one? Or oh, just hell yeah. Wait till yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Let's see. Uh, release date. Here we go. You guys can get it today. Oh, wait. Yeah, April 2nd. Um, oh, it was posted on the 1st. Was so that not true? Hold on. Oh. <laughs> they gotcha. Uh, they gotcha. It might still happen. Oh, that here it like is. A really weird, that's a really weird April Fool's joke to do. Is- it is weird because they didn't really, they didn't wrap it in any kind of joke, which is my problem with that sort of thing. Okay, it looks yeah. like it's the 15th. I don't know who had the 2nd. I read that weird, but the 15th. So anyway, okay. it'll be available, 4K digital. I'm buying it. I, then I'll have both parts. I can sit down and just binge that shit back to front, front to back, over and over until I'm dead, or at least there until you go. at least Fu- until uh, Furiosa comes out. That's right. They showed a new uh, trailer for Furiosa that I hadn't seen before. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's the one that's now on, um, uh, on YouTube and stuff. But it's uh, trailer number uh, two. It's really good. Yeah, yeah. Trailer number the two. new one's good. It is uh, shows a little bit more stuff going on, and uh, mm-hmm. you get a little better look at the green place and. You know, there's yes. uh, uh, there's what's his Chris Hemsworth yelling, "Ready, steady, go!" As he jumps oh, into yeah. the camera, I can't wait to meet yep. his character. He he is going to be the biggest freak of the year, and I can't freaking wait. <laughs> lady and gentlemen, yeah, ladies and yeah, lady and gentlemen, <laughs> start your engines. Yeah, yeah the, I cannot great. cannot see it soon enough. Uh, all right. Let's do some. We can't um, wait to hear about it. <laughs> oh, that's all I'm going to talk about probably for a while. You uh, guys, you know, if you're looking at taking a, let's say you want to take a week break from TMS, the time to do it would be like May 25th or whatever it is. And that whole week is just going to be a yeah. mess. I know I'm going to take a break from TMS for a week. That yeah. week uh, at least if it's shit, then we're in trouble. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, God, I know. I can't even imagine what will happen. What, uh, you know, the, the fear is you go from, you know, let's go back in time. You go from Road Warrior to Thunderdome. And while mm-hmm. there's plenty to like about Thunderdome, there's lots mm-hmm. to not like about Thunderdome. Mm-hmm. So can they go from Fury Road to Furiosa without without making that slip? I please I don't think screw so, this because up. I feel like it's got um the the studios I think were really heavily involved managing um dude's vision in, in making Thunderdome. Right, um, George Miller's uh, vision and changing things up, whereas uh, it feels like he still has all the creative control for Furiosa. So I think it's going to be more like Fury Road. Probably. I, also, when they were making uh, Thunderdome, his best friend slash co-writer, uh, writing partner, passed away, and so he got real mm. depressed and didn't really want to finish it. And there was a whole story behind the scenes there, and that's why after that one, he just went on to make a bunch of kid stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, now he's now he's back with a passion so i we're probably fine brian's right we're fine everything's fine everyone don't worry okay we got like a month and a half and then we'll find out ourselves two months about two months yeah uh all right that is it for that let's do some news right now it's time for the news and it's brought to you by Orphan farm boy kisses sister while a deadbeat dad tries to get him to join the family business yes any guesses that one I knew right off of Orphan Farm Boy. Uh, I'm gonna go to Tashi Station and get some power converters. <laughs> well done. I was hoping yeah. it would be so obvious that you would question it and go, "Well, yeah. that's too easy," and then you'd think of something yeah. else. But yeah, you're right. Star Wars. I can't tell if it's if it's uh, the the original trilogy or the newest trilogy. Oh, oh, just kidding. Farm um, Boy. Did you, you know, and we were got, got all caught up in that discussion about Furious. So did you already mention that there's no show tomorrow? Uh, oh, no, I forgot to mention it. I'm glad you said it. <laughs> we said it yesterday, uh, pro show, but we didn't say it during the main show, so I want to do it again. Oh, that's why I thought we already did because we just talked this morning about it. Anyway, yeah. no show tomorrow. 
I had a sure. thing I got to go do, and I'll be gone all morning. Uh, so I'm not going to be here. That means no show. That means that uh, you get your Wednesday off. It probably means Brian can do some stuff that he mm-hmm. normally wouldn't have time for because we don't have a show. So watch for possible streams of you working on a thing. He'll let exactly. you know. Watch Something. for all that. Uh, I'll be back later for DTNS, so I won't be gone all day. But uh, no, no show tomorrow. All right, back Thursday. Uh, we're here today, obviously, and then tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> everything, everything normal except for uh, the Thursday. Yeah, uh, I don't, I, Wednesday. Sorry, Wednesday. I don't, I don't know why I have to go to such. I'm going to such lengths to describe such an easy thing. I know. Yeah, no show tomorrow. That's it. You know what Three it months. is? We just don't like not doing shows. So when we don't, I feel yeah, like I have to overexplain it because I hate it. I hate not doing it. It's so true. Totally true. Uh, All right. Let's get to the news here. Uh, Scientists are trying to answer one of these age-old questions. Uh, It's been assumed for a long time, and some people assume there's data for this, and there is some, that if you flip a coin often enough, you will always end up around Mm 50-50. Like there's no real advantage to heads versus tails or tails versus heads, even though I think a lot of people are partial to heads for really no good reason. It's like a weird... Hmm bias in our heads about it is kind of weird yeah yeah uh, but yeah i think if you say hey heads or tails i'll bet more people that's an issue that that should be the the science is uh what percentage of people say heads by by uh default yeah and i'll bet it's high percentage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i don't that know what is. they didn't do that here but they did toss three hundred and fifty thousand seven hundred and fifty seven coins not just like quarters here in the u.s coins from all over the world really okay yeah. Because, you know, you want to make sure we're not biased toward one coin or another. Uh, The coin is often used uh, in these kinds of situations with the theory being there's an equal chance that it will land on heads as there is a land on tails. And it turns out that's not actually true. And it's not due to a case of heads I win, tails you lose, which, again, is a phrase you hear. And I think people are biased toward heads. Uh, anyway, the revelation comes from a pre-registered study which recorded the results of these coins being tossed and suggested that there is, in fact, a tiny bias involved in the flipping of any coin. study involved 48 people who flipped all 350,000-plus coins from 46 currencies. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like all the currencies. (laughs) I mean, do they do... I mean, if you if you think about it, all right, we've got what five coins, five potential. I guess if you count like silver dollars and half dollars, you've got uh, penny, nickel, mm-hmm. dime, quarter, uh, half dollar, silver dollar. Right. And then you could throw Susan B. Anthony dollars or those presidential coins. Yeah. That's you know Canadian potentially coins. eight coins. Yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying from the U.S. Oh, so just you've got US. potentially eight U.S. coins. Right. Um, so. 46 currencies yeah i mean you you look at how oh, many different yeah. currencies around the world and then multiply that times there are five six seven different kinds of yeah currencies. i assume everyone's got a, a roughly similar denomination yeah, sort of layout probably. right probably yeah, yeah. um but, but yeah uh, like in canadians you don't count because you got holes in your shit okay so pfft, back up <laughs> your toonies and your loonies yeah your two your weird two dollar coin. What? With the hole in the middle and the queen on there for some I'd reason. So I'd be so happy. And we've talked about this before. I think when really early on with the show, I would be so happy to just get rid of dollar bills and have dollar and two dollar coins. Yeah, that'd be great. But the, I mean, actually, seriously, maybe we we are really getting to a place where we don't need them. I've I've had the same three five dollar bills and two one dollar bills. Uh, stuck here to the edge of my extra wallet yeah. um, for months without having to take anything out or pay for anything. I guess I've done tips, like dollar tips and stuff, where I put it in a jar at the boba place. Right. I will do that. But in the case, in my case, I have the same ten in my yeah. wallet since the cruise, which was in twenty 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 two. Yeah, jeez. So I think maybe you know I, I'm changing direction mid rant and saying you know maybe we don't need dollar coins, two dollar coins. I think we're pretty getting pretty close to not needing money. Yeah, not needing maybe we don't need money anymore. Money. Yeah, yeah, until the whole grid dies and then we're all screwed and have nothing. We will have to barter yeah. our bodies, you know. Yeah, exactly. To go out there and <laughs> offer free services <laughs> for in exchange for whatever how many eggs you have whatever that's how it's going to be that's right and then you could just basically say all right which which would you prefer heads or tails yeah yeah 
Uh, <laughs> it's still 50-50. <laughs> uh, it says here, as it turns out, uh, it's not true, but it's pretty close to true. Um, they did. Uh, it turned out the coins had a 50.8% chance of landing on the side that it started on. That's interesting. So a okay. 0.8 chance. If you started How? on tails, let's say you had tails up and then you flipped it. Yeah. Overall, 0.8% is all the advantage that Tails got. Or if it was heads, same advantage. Whatever whatever face was up when you tossed it had a 0.8% advantage. I have a question. I'm raising my hand. Yeah. Question. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. You in all the right. front. You in the Scientists, front row. Scientists, 350,757 coin tosses. We don't think they did that by hand, correct? We think they probably used a machine, and a machine that probably um, both flipped the coin and scanned well, in this case, it was 48 people who flipped all those coins. So it was people. Oh, really? It was 48 people who did it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they used oh. real people to get the get the results. The idea being, I think, because I'm with you. Like when you do the toast, does buttered toast land face down thing? Yeah. You always see that test with a machine that that would have to create some that consistency. Would have the same. They would basically. Well, the reason the reason I ask that is it's less about. Yeah, it's more about. Oh, well, if they're using machine to do the flipping that machine is always going to put the same amount of pressure on the edge right. that it flips up. And so it's, it, there is a chance that it's always going to land the same way. But yeah. so these, this is down to people flipping. That's this is not only down to Are people, but that's, that? I think that's the whole, that's the neat thing about all this is because the point eight says that the bias towards what's face up mm-hmm. yeah. is a subtle one, but it's happening to the tune of 0.8%. In other words, you with that coin, you're not thinking of this, it's not conscience, consci- conscious, but you flip it enough times over time, that bias is going to show up in that 0.8%. You're kind of controlling that as the flipper. Yeah. I mean, you're not right, doing it every time. Of pressure that, right. And it's the same reason people can't pick up a pair of craps dice and, you know, set them exactly the right way every time and right. then do muscle memory to like, always flip it people try you watch them at the craps table and you sure. will see them try sure and maybe there are people on the internet who've been able to do it but it's rare that that happens how so. could you do how could you even do it just yeah seems- it's just people who like they have they they just like muscle memory they you know they just basically do that same thing but there's so many variables about the way it hits this the little um the spongy stuff on the back wall of the craps table and how it bounces forward. And that, that spongy thing has an angle to it. It's like, uh, mm. like little diamonds. So it, if it hits the, if it's the same one, the same way, every time with the same amount of pressure, potentially, yes, you could recreate it, but even air movements. I mean, there's so many, variables so many stuff. variables. I don't know how you would ever control it. Maybe it is an overtime slight percentage increase or something, but yeah. Uh, the interesting thing here is they, they call it, so they've given it a name, same side bias. <laughs> and uh, so here's the bottom line. Because the coin faces the same way more in the air, because it started mm-hmm. in your hand and mm-hmm. will therefore be face up more often in the air mm-hmm. than, than if you had it on the bottom, that is that tiny bias toward the 0.8% that makes enough of a, of a push to put it over 50. It's pretty crazy. I love this kind of crap. Love it. Let me ask you this. Is it possible to, yeah. um, and this, this might be a good Bobby thing, but um, if you look at a quarter, the amount of, and, and basically you look at it side view, mm. right? Edge yeah. on. Yeah. Um, can you see, is it possible that there's enough, obviously this has to be the case for all 46 currencies for sure. it to have this percentage, point five, point, uh, 50.8, but sure. if there's more protrusion, more of an extrusion of mass on one side, you know, Washington's head is heavier, is than the, heavier yeah. or, or more of his head comes out than the eagle and its feathers. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, would that influence the way, like if, if you look and say somebody has got a quarter and you say, Oh, all right, they're flipping with the head up and I know the head's got more mass. So there's a better chance that it's going to land on heads. Yeah, that's what, see, I would have thought, obviously, there's probably a way to weight a coin the way they're, yeah. like, dice is different because you have three dimensions to work yeah, with. Yeah, and dice, and dice, even, like, even craps dice, they have, they have measured, and even with the paint and the divots and stuff like that, there is no advantage side on craps dice because it's a flat, there's no dimples, it is a flat deal. It's just a flat 
uh, cube. Just a flat cube. I mean, yeah. you can't probably see the reflection. I'm trying to get just to where you see the reflection of the. Uh, oh yeah, I can see. Yeah, those there. are those are flat yeah. matte finish. Yeah, there's no no dimples filled with, with. Um, that's goo. interesting. <laughs> they're just. That's they're part of the deal where they have. To, that's that's a that's a non cheating thing, right? That's an actual thing. Yeah, they I do. think I think um, there is a dimple, but the way these are produced. Yeah, like there's a divot, it's filled with stuff, but then it's polished so much on each side that there is not, mm -hmm. um, there mm -hmm. is no difference. You can't hold this in your hand, feel it, and figure out uh, which side is which. Yeah, microscopic at best. Yes, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Flush your holes is what I'm saying. Flush flush and fill your holes. Yeah, flush your and holes. Fill, fill your hole, then flush them, all right? Uh, <laughs> Before flusher. Yeah, now... Uh, the only thing I was going to say is, well, in this particular case, if you didn't have the face up thing, because it was equal for tails and heads, mm -hmm. even if you had a heavy coin or a heavy faced face coin on the heads part, mm -hmm. I think I think even though this shows that bias, it's going to be like for me, I'm always going to go heads default. I always do. And I don't know why. Why do mm -hmm. I do that? Like if I yeah. was at a really important football game, Super Bowl. O yeah, yeah, yeah. Overtime, got to throw the new coin like they did this last right. time. Yep. And and you said Scott, you have to make a decision, heads or tails. I'm doing heads. Yeah. Yeah. I and I don't I don't know I why I, I feel that strong about it. It's weird, right? Yeah, it is really weird. It's just like I don't know if you, if there's some sort of there's a positive connotation with heads and a negative connotation with tails or something. Something. Um, devils have tails, but angels have heads. Oh man. <laughs> Or the, the or the whole heads I win tails you lose phrase that maybe that stuck with us I don't know heard right that, yeah heard that in <laughs> movies and shit uh, right. well there's that let's do a quick story about uh, a boat race Oxford rowers this is the uh, the over there in England there in, in the in the UK in that's the right uh, Oxford rowers ex, uh, criticize sewage levels in the River Thames oh, oh no the River Gosh. Thames as we knew it as kids the River Thames. <laughs> did we know that it like did we do we think that was it as kids when Thames? i when i thought it was Thames, it was because i watched benny hill and they had the production company would start doo, 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 and it would show yeah. th it would say uh, Thames production or something and then somebody said scott that's Thames," and i've never forgotten it since then so <laughs> but i you know when we were kids what did we have yeah, from europe we had yeah. we think there's a king queen over there what else uh you got some funny comedies uh, Monty well, Python, we're done. That's it. I had uh, a parent and several grandparents that were uh, from the UK. That that. Uh, oh yeah, you had a it, way better heard connection. Heard it and saw it as Thames before I before I heard, saw it as anything else. But yeah, yeah you you had an advantage there <laughs> that I did not have. Yeah. No. All right. Uh, anyway, they uh, they 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 don't like it because they think that the water's full of poop. Yeah. Uh, they uh, revealed the raw sewage in the Thames. Uh, let's see, sewage spills doubled last year to 3.6 million hours of spills compared to 1.7 million hours in 2022. Million hours, 3.6 million hours of spills. Three, that's crazy. Okay, within the spills are human hours. waste, wet wipes, and sanitary products that can pose a serious risk to swimmers. Uh, I'm trying to see how you get the hours part. It's just funny that they measure it in hours and not in gallons or... Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. Uh, speaking That's... to BBC, uh, one of the one of the rowers says, this morning I was throwing up and I wasn't sure if I was able to race. It would be a lot nicer if there wasn't so much poo in the water. That's what they said. Well, anyway, good luck to them and their rowing and their uh, sewage and their whatnot over there. We hope you guys are all going to be okay. <laughs> don't, just don't drink the water while you're rowing. You'll be fine. That's right. It's, uh, it's for rowing, not for drinking. Mm -mm. Row, no drink. Uh, but also, break. And when you have a break, you play a song because on the other side, we'll have Amy. She's here to talk about reading and books and uh, excited to have her on. I also have a recommendation today as well for a book I'm reading. We'll get to all that in a moment. But first, nice. song time with Brian. Yeah, and this is a uh, you know I, I uh, rebooted right before the show, and I uh, did not uh, relaunch Apple Mail where my notes are for the band I'm going to be talking about. But I have it now. Hey, how about a band called Messer, which I think is uh, are they German? I know Messer is a um, 
is a German uh, word. I don't know what it means. Mm. Um, but they are, uh, this is some heavier stuff. You guys seem to like uh, the mix and, and making sure that I throw some heavy stuff in each week for you guys. This is, uh, they have a brand new album that is Deluxe Dolby Edition album with bonus tracks. That's not the name of it. It's just called Messer. The album mm. is just called Messer. <laughs> sure. But they've re-released it. And this is the first single uh, from the re-release. It's called Throw It Away. Here is Messer. Mask, smask, smask, mask, smask, mask, smask. That's it. Mask, smask. You flush your urine, whether or not you've also left feces. And we return. Tell me more about Messer. Yeah, that's uh, the band Messer from the album Messer uh, with a song called Messer. No, it's really called Throw It Away. Uh, but nice. uh, check them out. Brand new re-release of their original album re- uh, released in 2018 with um, uh, higher quality, new content, uh, remastered, all that stuff. Isn't there a, um, a famous tennis star named, not Messer. Messi? Well, there's the soccer, um, Mess, uh, Lionel Messier. Messier, uh, Messi. soccer though, Messi. right? What am I thinking soccer, of for tennis? Yeah. There's somebody like a German. Maybe it's hmm. not Messer. I used to pick him Messer. when I'd play uh, uh, Virtua Tennis back in the day. Oh, really? Interesting, yeah. yeah. Oh, German great. for knife. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, uh, uh, Gretel and Dr. Calhoun. Not Becker. Messier's hockey. Well, there is a Messier in hockey. There's a Messier in hockey. What's the, who's the... Um, I can't think of it. There is a soccer player, though, that's uh, Messi, uh, too, right? I don't know. Probably. Hmm. Feels like the... F- Messi? Is that his Messi. name? Messi. Okay. That is who... It, right. I guess Messi that is hockey. Well. Lionel Messi is the soccer player. Oh. Who's the who's the tennis thing? All right, chat. You have to help me out. Uh, yeah, That's it for uh, that song. And uh, we're back now. We're going to get Amy in here and uh, get a little reading done. You know? Nothing wrong reading. Yeah. Yeah, a little read this. A little read this. Yeah, yeah. You want to read? Good news. We got some <laughs> recommendations for you. And uh, we're going to start. Oh, Agassi? Is that who you're thinking of? Maybe. Oh, Roger Fettier. That's who I'm thinking of. That's not even close to Messi or Messier no. or Messer. Was... <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Roger Fettier. That's it. Or Fetty. Is Federer, it Fettier? Federer? Federer. 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 Yeah. I picked that guy every time. He just looked mean and like he would win. Oh, he's, he's a good pick. Yeah, he's, he, a he's a solid pick. Grand Slam winner. Yeah. That, that game was great. One of the things that I enjoy also is reading. Well, 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 what do we have here? We have Amy Robinson, a.k.a. Red Fraggle 3, joining us as she does once a month to talk about book recommendations and why you might be wanting to read out there. Amy, welcome back to the show. Good morning, friends. Hi. How are you? Good. Ooh, good. Good. How are you? How did I'm pretty? Good. How'd your UT good. your UT ninety nine play? I didn't. I couldn't play. I was out. So how'd it go? Was it fun? Well, you know, it seems like that was the case for almost all of us. Oh, all I right. I did the whole. You know, remember when you were in school or in college specifically, and you'd be like, "All right, fifteen minute rule. Sure, the professor doesn't show up. I'm leaving." Mm-hmm. Um, so I, yeah, I gave Dunaway about 20 minutes and he never showed up <laughs> and, uh, and nobody, like, it was like me and sick Recky, which like, y- that's just not even fair. No, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, no. Like, that's just ridiculous. That was just a, that was a moment where you can't have slaughter without laughter. Yeah. So this sick Recky person, uh, she is unbelievable in this game. Like but, to the point of like. I swear I'm getting punked. I, I don't know what's happening. But either in 2K4 or 99, it doesn't matter how hard you play. Yeah. Sick Recky is destroying everyone in her wake. <laughs> yeah. I realized, yeah, that's why I didn't get a call. I was, I was out lifting yesterday. That's why I didn't get the uh, the 430 call from Discord saying, Hey, Brian, you coming to join us? In the- <laughs> hey, Brian. Hey, Brian. Oh, hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why. Well, yeah, I don't know what had Dunaway had going on yesterday. I hope it was good stuff. But. Yeah, you never know, but hopefully, yes. Uh, well, anyway, oh, it's yeah, good to have yeah, you here. Yeah, the kids were off from school, so I think they were doing something. Oh, you God, know what? That's why he wasn't on the show. I forgot it. about that. Yep. Yep. He forgot yes. to tell everyone, but that was the reason. Uh, also, uh, it is secrecy. We know that, chat, but we like to call her sick recce because she wrecks yeah. us. <laughs> yeah, Calhoun. Yeah, we know. We, we know. know what's up. 
We know how we're, to do it. We're doing it on purpose. We know. We yeah. Know what we're doing. But we'll try. We'll try to get back in a seat on Friday with uh, some four or two K four, and we'll we'll have some fun. Uh, so, Amy, let's Scott, talk about books. Not, oh, oh, you want to talk about? Books? No, no, no. Okay, well, go ahead. What were you going to say? Okay, go, okay. go ahead. So. You are not the only one with a cra- weird, like, random lady story this week. So, Uh-oh. what do you got? I had to go. I went to I went to the piercing place because I wanted to get new stuff for my piercings. Right, yeah. I, I changed out my nose ring to be an actual ring instead of a stud and some other stuff. So we're there, and this lady walks in with a stroller, and the you know the clerk says to her i'm sorry ma'am like we can't have any children in the shop unless you know they're actually like over 16 and getting pierced themselves and they you know whatever right so she turns around to leave i i look and she's got she's wearing like one of those like white kind of linen dresses you know so it's like cotton sure. but not like not like t-shirty cotton like you know more of a more of a tablecloth-y kind of cotton okay and um you know and she turns to take the stroller out and the wind blows as she's full commando. Oh, oh and I was like, whoa, whoa. Okay, then. That really? was a choice. Well, wow. maybe she, maybe she was getting some, uh, the nether pierce piercings or something. <laughs> maybe. I maybe. don't know. That, yeah. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, man, it was like the wind just blew and she was just full like the commando. director's cut of, uh, Marilyn Monroe and the seven year itch. That's right. <laughs> And no one's ever going to see that cut, unfortunately. Yeah. Wow. Here's the here's the unfortunate part of the story. That was the funny part. This is the okay. unfortunate part. All right. I've I have since been called back. Like my piercer comes gets me. I was like, all right, let's go, let's do this. So Chuck is still hanging out, and the lady goes, turns, and shows us all her moon, and then, uh, you know, walks away. Comes back in a couple minutes later without without the baby right and we're like okay, okay you know maybe <laughs> some you know her older kid is in the car or something oh, like God, that whatever hope. whatever yeah yeah <laughs> nope she just put the kid in the car really? and went back in you yeah. can't do that like, you can't put the kid in there and leave him that's not good crap. yeah like chuck told me that when i came back out i was like are you serious right now and yeah how old was the baby if you figured of the year yeah mother of the year Probably, I mean, it was like sitting up. The kid was like sitting up in their stroller, you know. So probably, I would guess like somewhere between like maybe ten to fifteen months, okay. somewhere around in there. Maybe she, maybe like, she, so, maybe she pushed the shoved the baby back up from whence it came. I don't know. Came came yeah. naked with a blanket on. Maybe that was the plan. You just like uh, you know back to the uterus with you, Jimmy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, but yeah, like I. Whew. Yeah, Chuck told me that, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Like, I okay. I hope they get her because she was a walk-in, also. Like, she didn't have an appointment, so I was like, "All right, well, hopefully they work her in quickly." I guess. <laughs> Yikes! Wow, that's wild, dude. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad everybody came out of that okay. I hope the baby's all right. Mainly is what I'm hoping. Uh, me too. Because that's me too. pretty wild. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. let's get to books. I'm going to make a quick recommendation of a book I'm reading right now that I'm just going to toss out because I'm not, I, I think I'm 48% through according to, my, to the Kindle app. Uh, but it's a, a book called Rust, or uh, excuse me, Red Dust. Um, it's part of this Gods and Assassins book series. It's book one of that. Somebody recommended it to me and said, Scott, uh, you want some like weird omnipotent space being meets old time Western dirty planet you know local issues kind of firefly kind of vibe i said well i sure do and uh, they recommended red dust and i can say i think pretty comfortably that halfway through i would recommend this it's really a really really interesting take on some of its concepts some of it won't be new to some people but a uh, little little side recommendation for people who are interested in those kinds of books or in that genre you like science fiction you like a little bit of uh, space religion and uh, throw in a little Western action. Uh, Red Dust oh. might be your jam. Uh, Frank Kennedy is the author, by the way. I should have mentioned that. Uh, all right. Cool. Amy, uh, tell me, uh, let's talk about what you want us to read this week. What do you got going? Yes. So I have I have one clip, but two books. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and start with the one I brought the clip for first. All right, here we go. He wondered if it had maybe been the sheer weight of his wanting or his watching that strained his eyes till they saw what they'd wanted to see. He wondered if maybe 
that was how God worked now in the new world. Tired of interventionist pyrotechnics like burning bushes and locust plagues, maybe God now worked through the tired eyes of drunk Iranians in the American Midwest, through CVS handles of bourbon and little pink pills with G31 written on their side. Cyrus took a pull from the giant plastic old crow bottle. The whiskey did for him what a bedside table did for normal people. It was always at the head of his mattress, holding what was essential to him in place. It lifted him daily from the same sleep it eventually set him into. Lying there, reflecting on the possible miracle he just experienced, Cyrus asked God to do it again. Confirmation like typing your password in twice to a web browser. Surely if the all-knowing creator of the universe had wanted to reveal themselves to Cyrus, there'd be no ambiguity. Cyrus stared at the ceiling light, which in the fog of his cigarette smoke looked like a watery moon, and waited for it to happen again. But it didn't. Whatever sliver of a flicker he had or hadn't perceived didn't come back. And so lying there in the stuffy haze of relative sobriety, itself a kind of high, amidst the underwear and cans and dried piss and empty orange pill bottles and half-read books held open against the hardwood breaking their spines to face away, Cyrus had a decision to make. That is a wild read right there. Yes, mm. yes. Tell and me more. It's very, a lot of it is very lyrical and poetic like that. So this book is called mm. Martyr with an exclamation point on the <laughs> Murder! 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 Um, <laughs> it's by Kava Akbar. And apparently this is his first novel, but he has written a lot of poetry, which explain. I did not know that before I read it. And, uh, you know, as I was reading it, I was really impressed with the imagery and like the lyrical flow of the prose. It was really, really lovely. Like, you know, explaining how the whiskey was like a, like a bedside table for a normal person. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, like that just paints the picture of who we're talking about right now. Interesting. Um, so, and no, Tom Norm, it's not a trap. It's, it's not a trap that it's Akbar. Uh, <laughs> um, different kind of Akbar. So different, different Akbar yeah. altogether. Sure. Uh, so yeah, it's this about uh, the protagonist there that we heard about was his name Cyrus. And he is a sort of uh, early 20s, early to mid 20s Iranian immigrant who he was he was raised in the in the Midwest. Uh, he was born in Tehran and came here as a young child after his mother was killed. Her her commercial plane was shot down over Tehran because it was mistaken for a military plane. Mm. And, you know, so there was a whole whole kerfuffle with that. And, yeah, this just kind of takes him through his journey. Clearly, as you can hear, he's... Uh, sort of self-medicating with a lot of drinking and drugs and and whatnot and he's sort of dealing with how to how to make his way through a world with really no guidance and and no he has really no ties to anyone um but you know he knows he is an artist and wants to continue making art and uh and how you know how does he how does he find his place hmm. in the world? Interesting. So, it says, uh, yeah. beautiful story, blew me away. Some of these reviewers are really, are really glowing about it. People like this mm -hmm. a lot. Well, and I'll tell you, the one that got me uh, really, really interested in reading it was um, John Green. And I'll find the review he wrote here, which you guys know I love John Green. Yeah. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, dang it. See cancer, oh, there it is. Okay. See cancer free uh, now. Brilliant. He's cancer free, isn't he? Or isn't he? Well, uh, he always was. His brother, Hank, had cancer. Oh, I'm thinking and... of Hank Green. Never mind. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Hank Hank is now cancer free. Yes. Okay, uh, good. That's so... good to hear. Yeah. That's pretty rough. Um, But John says, a brilliant and blisteringly alive novel about not just how we go on, but also why. Kava Akbar's first novel is so stunning, so wrenching, and so beautifully written that reading it for the first time, I kept forgetting to breathe. Oh, wow. I will carry this story and the people in it with me for the rest of my life. Goodness. So I don't know that it had that big of an impact on me personally, but <laughs> I did, I did enjoy it. And I was very compelled. I really, really wanted to know. And it, it's, uh, it's 
it's written in the third person. Uh, it's sort of a third person limited omniscient and it, it does jump around a little bit from timeline to timeline and also from character to character. So it gives you, it gives you some of that generational trauma thing happening where you're like, oh, okay, this is why Cyrus is doing this is because, you know, he had relatives doing that and whatnot. Um, so one of the most fascinating things is uh, they tell the story of his uncle. And apparently this is a true thing. I did not know that this was a thing that, that they did, but um, in anything resembling uh, a holy war for Islam, they will take a soldier and it is his job to get all dressed in black with a lantern and this, you know, really elaborate sword and and a flashlight you know and ride out onto the battlefield because there's in in islam there is a there's a particular imagery that supposedly you see right before you die mm. and it's supposed to be like a comforting thing for all their fallen you know their fallen soldiers who are on the field and are about to die like and so that was this character, his uncle did that. Like that was his job was to ride out onto battlefields and just be this mythical figure. And so he literally just watched these men die, you know, in their, mm -hmm. in their, their most vulnerable moments. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it's not, uh, could you see, it's not depressing. Um, it's actually, it, it's it's interesting i found it i mean it there are some heavy things in it but i didn't find it depressing i found it meaningful and and moving but i i kind of felt it up i felt uplifted by it mm. um but you know your mileage may vary so if if you're if you're like oh i can't deal with anything heavy at all right now maybe maybe leave this one for another time mm. um because you know i don't know if you will find it depressing or not i i didn't i found it heavy but all, you know but also very impactful and moving in a good way nice well that's book yeah. number one check it out it is called yes. martyr with an exclamation point martyr! Martyr! Yes. it's your kids martyr martyr, <laughs> martyr! uh and yes. uh, uh what else did you bring what else you got only only martyrs in the building that's right Yes, <laughs> only martyrs in the building. Um, all right, so the second book I brought, it's interesting that you brought up uh, Cancer because this was a book that uh, a friend of mine wrote is actually, I mean, a friend is too loose a term, like a, probably an acquaintance, a, a common friend, I guess, mutual friend with lots of my friends. He's a puppeteer and a puppet builder. Yeah. His name is Adam Krutinger. And uh, so he wrote a book called Puppetry 101, Creating Film and Television Style Puppetry. Uh, and I will tell you, I'm a fan of his. I met him this past year at Dragon Con, and he's a really, really nice guy. That's why I kind of was like, hey, friend feels like too familiar a word there, because mm -hmm. I, like, I just met him. But, uh, but he is really great, and he has a whole YouTube series also, very similar to, uh, you know, Bill Duran's YouTube series where he's building stuff, but in this case, he's building puppets. Right. Um, and the book is, it's a very slim volume, so it's really easy to go through, but if you've ever been interested at all in how puppets are created, how, you know, how to, how to operate a puppet, how to do monitor work, how to do any of that, uh, it's, it's great. It's a great little book. And um, Adam is actually struggling with cancer at the moment he has a stage three brain tumor oh, geez. so oh, yeah i know right it's it so i was like man i need to i need to give adam a a little plug here um so that was it's a little bit of an ulterior motive there but also really good i like genuinely really good book it's a really good read it's very inspiring honestly like it's kind of like if you you know you read any of bill's stuff it makes you want to go make a thing makes you want to go make a puppet mm -hmm. Sure. No, so, that's great. So is he, um, this stuff is this series on YouTube is a thing we should probably promote as well. So not just the, the book, but where, where can people get yes. more of his stuff? So yeah, he is the puppet nerd on YouTube. So if you search for puppet nerd, uh, you'll find him and his website is also puppetnerd.com. 
to. So, there yeah. we go. I'm going to also add this to quicktms.li. Great idea. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at all this So stuff. that one's a that one's a very, very, very thin volume, but uh, <laughs> oh, you know, a, it's not like a huge textbook. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, so it's quick read. But like the lost fun. member of Green Day right here. A L- little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's got a, it definitely has like a member of Green Day vibe tone. Yeah. That's funny. Awesome. Yeah. He's <laughs> Punk really Punk rock His videos maker. are really, really fun. Yeah. And you, he, yeah. Um, he does a really good job of, of making everything accessible. Uh, he does content for kids also. And so, you know, he's, he's actually made puppets out of like just a couple ping pong balls and some tape, um, you know, stuff like that. So, <laughs> cool. you know, but all the way from that to like really, really complex puppet. In fact, Scott, the, uh, the puppet that I made for you mm-hmm. was one of his patterns. Oh, he's right over so, there. I almost can reach him, but I can't quite. He's right there. <laughs> well, that's based on yeah. something. I didn't know that. That's cool. Brian's too. Mm-hmm. The the first one you got, Brian and I. That set. No, Brian's. Brian's actually. This is an edit. If you want to add this link as well, um, this uh, projectpuppet.org was the one that I made Brian's puppet from. Oh. So because I okay. needed something with a bigger head for you. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah, my. You know, mine was big, but. Brian. Yeah, no kidding. I think Scott's head is bigger than mine. He's even said so. Oh, and I know it yeah. is because I've seen oh, you no, put hats on. I needed, oh, I needed oh, a bigger need a big head one for Scott. Scott. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have a fat. I have a fat monster head. <laughs> I just have a round head. That's that's. Yeah. Yes. It's a perfect spheroid. Yeah, you got a perfect round head, Doctor. What does he say? Put your head. What does he say in that movie? Head pants. Head. <laughs> it's a virtual planetoid. <laughs> It's got its own orbit. Been been too long since I've seen that. Uh, well, all right then. These are fine recommendations today. Awesome. And as uh, Brian just said, he puts them up on QuickTMS.li. We put all our little extra stuff from from our co-hosts yeah. up there. So please go check that out and read a book. Damn it! All right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Do that. Do read that. A book. If you want to listen to them, that's great. If you want to read them that's cool too if whatever it is you do book or graphic it, novel that's totally that's fun also well. very cool exactly audiobooks, audiobooks that's all it's all reading it's all yeah, good yeah you know? yeah if read. anyone wants to so yeah i know a couple days ago you guys mentioned discworld and so if anybody needs like if they're intimidated or whatever and you need like a specific a specific recommendation you know based on you know what i know of you which one where where should you start <laughs> yeah on discworld then let me know and i will do that for you because i love it. it's like a, more people to read discworld i feel like you need to create a buzzfeed quiz which book of discworld should you start with it's like it gives you four yeah I four little choices of like that. which uh which condiment do you prefer on your sandwich and then uh, <laughs> right that's right like, oh ketchup or mayonnaise and like okay and which disney character do you most associate with and yeah at the end it mm-hmm. says start with book five <laughs> right yes exactly yeah what what do you like on your pizza <laughs> you like yes. pineapple go read something else <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm hey. Kidding, I'm kidding. hey i'm with I'm you kidding, i don't like i don't like fruit on pizza i'm with whoever doesn't like that uh, you guys are all crazy it's all it more for, more I for me like is the secret flavor. pizza the cosmopolitan mm. on a, honestly i like the flavor of pineapple on pizza but i feel like it's there's so much moisture there's so much yeah. you know just water in a pineapple that it's very easy for the crust to get soggy so we, that that's my main objection to pineapple. that was um yeah we uh when i worked at uh, both dano's pizza and pizza hotline growing up owned by the same the same people they were my girlfriend's parents but when we broke up i moved over to pizza hotline <laughs> she stayed at dano's pizza but um, yeah, whenever we did uh, we did pineapple on pizza, we had paper towels by the uh, by the uh, the cold trays, and mm-hmm. we would basically put all the pineapple we were going to use on the pizza between a couple of paper towels, get all the moisture out, and then put them on the pizza. That sounds that sounds like a smart yeah. way to do it. There and maybe go. I would like yeah. it more if it was a little bit less, you know, wet. Less, uh, wet. Yeah. yeah, I don't want yeah. wet pizza. <laughs> Uh well unless or maybe it's... sour like Chuck doesn't like pineapple because it's too sour for him he's like yeah yeah you know, but... I I loved the freaking beetroot beets that we had on pizza in Australia I was amazed at how how well that worked and that's another sweet you know they're pickled beets 
and yeah. uh, that works so well on pizza that I don't know why I haven't made it over here. Yeah, pickled oh, anything cool. is good on pizza. I, I'm I'm with you on that. I think so yeah, because your mushrooms, the good mushrooms you put on pizza are pickled. Yeah, as opposed to you don't want to put just dry raw ass mushrooms on there. You no, those butter. don't work. If you do that, they're like yeah. little sautéed, sautéed in butter or like pickled. A, yeah, like little, you need yeah. like that. But you pull that, uh, you know, because otherwise a mushroom just kind of tastes kind of chalky. It's, yeah, it's, it's dry. Like, it, yeah. 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 And it turns into jerky, mushroom jerky. Yeah. yeah. You just use fresh mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody signed up for mushroom jerky. I can promise you that. Right. <laughs> you. Uh, well, Amy, uh, the pleasure is ours having you on today. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your month. And uh, I look forward to seeing you at the end of this month. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm That'll be great. very, very excited to see you guys. It'll be awesome. Uh, take care. We'll talk to you soon. All right. If you want to play a little Unreal with her, she'll be playing with us on Friday, I believe. Cool. Um, she's usually there. And uh, assuming Dunaway's back, which I'm pretty sure is the case, it'll all work out in the end. A reminder, no show tomorrow. All right? Just making it clear. So nobody sends me messages saying, where's the show? April Fool's is over. I ain't kidding around. It's no show tomorrow. No show tomorrow. Uh, we got a text about alarms. Uh, you know what? And it's good that we didn't say it on Monday, yesterday, because people would have thought it was an April Fool's joke. So that's why we waited until today to tell people. 100% that's why it is not because Otherwise, I they would have thought, oh, it's the joke. They're just joking. Yeah. And then they would have been pissed. It's not because that. I forgot it all. It's 100% nope, not what Brian said. Nope. Uh-huh. Uh, here is a text about alarms. I talked about how my new alarm is this. <laughs> And I hear that in the morning now when I get up. (laughs) Well, this guy wrote in and says, alarms to wake up to, check out Navy sweepers, and imagine hearing that every morning. And I said, oh, what's that? And I went and looked it up. Brian, here is Navy sweepers, all right? If you're in the Navy, you know this. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's terrible. Here we go. Oh, that's already enough. It's horrible. (laughs) No way. Thank you. Yeah, they do some kind of whistle business, and... um, I'd never heard of that before, but that's a thing, and you can wake up to that. So, no. Yeah. No. no. I'll pass. I'm yeah. good. I'm good. Yeah. In the Navy. Today's <laughs> my day to sleep in. Yeah. Really awful. <laughs> that's the choice. And then this text just in, hi, TMS. You all said that Monday was a bank holiday. Well, someone forgot to tell me because there I was listening at the in the in uh, to the show while at my job in a bank. Love the show, though. So was it not a bank holiday? Because I don't not know. Not in the U.S. No, bank holiday in the U.K. yesterday, but not not oh, here in the U.S. Okay. Now, still got our mail, still got, uh, uh, I think kids were off from school in a lot of places here. But uh, um, by the way, uh, uh, should you be listening to our show uh, while you're at your job in a bank? What, I mean, what if? Uh, yeah, what if someone robs it? What if Giancarlo Esposito uh, sneaks in, like does a little uh, Mission Impossible style dangling from the ceiling into the uh, into yeah. the vault? What, yeah. what about that? Yeah, then what? What will you say then? then what? Did you, by the way, I think you shared it originally, but that trailer for that thing, that new thing he's in, that looks great. Yes, Parish. Parish. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, it's going to be another hard one to wait until all the episodes are available to uh, to start binging that because. I love me some Giancarlo Esposito. I say I still say that Kaleidoscope. You 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 bypass the stupid gimmick of watch these in any order. Mm-hmm. Um, that Netflix thing. It's it's a decent heist series, a really good heist series, and it's elevated because of the work of Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah, I love him. Uh, yeah. And also, I think that slowly but surely, every Breaking Bad major character should do a show set in new orleans <laughs> so we got we oh got, that'd be great if it's gus gus fring uh, like it's a you know the gus fring show sure why not but we had you know the judge or just judge that was great oh i see what you're talking about yeah so not character but actor actor should, yeah should, yeah yeah, okay. yeah so you get him in there uh, uh get Cranston. Jesse, gotcha yeah Cranston. get jesse gotcha. pinkman out there or doing something i don't know what but sure, something sure he could do a little cop thing or I'm whatever i'm sure uh uh, what's his face? Uh, uh, oh, our guy that we really like, um, Stinky Pete. The guy who's got the you know the nasal voice and he talks like this. The uh, the the the. the oh, dude, Mike Irman uh, Trout. Mike Mike Irman Trout. Yeah, put him in there. Sure, Get that him guy's going. done some done some New Orleans style yeah. uh, movies. He has and he should. All right, that's what we're saying. Uh, well, there you go. Thank you for that uh, message, that breaking news from our text. We appreciate it. 801-471-0462 is where you can send your voicemails and your texts. We would love you to keep doing that. And also, of course, our email address is themorningstream at gmail.com. There's a site for all of it, frogpants.com slash TMS. So write it down, remember it, and use it at your leisure. 
Brian, we have to leave, but we have to leave with a song. So I can't leave till you leave a song. I can do that. I can totally do that. Um, still borrowing from March's uh, request because I don't get started with April ones. I think the earliest one I have is next week. So still, uh, still mopping up all of the requests that fell on the floor in March. This one came in early in March. Uh, good morning, sugarless and sweet potato. I'm sorry, sugarless sweet potato and banana cream. Oh, nice! I'm, oh. I'm banana cream. You're sugarless sweet potato. Gross, ah. gross. Uh, bet you can guess when he wrote this. It's another pie day and another anniversary with my beautiful wife. This year, she wrote a book, Healing Notes by Beth Hope, and the paperback is coming out today. Came out on Pie Day last month. I leave it to the cover master to pick something to help us celebrate this new chapter in our lives. Uh, signed, Tom. Nice. Uh, well, first off, happy anniversary and congratulations on uh, writing a book and getting that out there. Uh, as soon as I saw that uh, that request, I said, it has to be one song. And, well, it could be two. Uh, Elvis Costello's Every Day I Write the Book is another good choice. But I'm going with this one. Uh, Nick Lowe was in a band for a while called Rock Pile. Also included uh, Dave Edmonds, who knew the bride when she used to rock and roll. Uh, if you, you know that song, you mm -hmm. probably know the, the Dave Edmonds version. Sure. Uh, this cover of this Rock Pile song is uh, by Elizabeth McQueen and the Firebrands from their album, Happy Doing What We're Doing. And it just shows that Elizabeth McQueen likes all the same music I do because every one of my favorite bands was represented on this cover album. <laughs> uh, came out in 2005. Here it is, a cover of Rock Pile's When I Write the Book. Get more at frogpants.com. Why won't my phone let me email you? Oh. <laughs> Why won't 